Mina, konnichiwa, Jesus Freaking Gamer here. 2 Samuel chapter 6. Now, of all the things that David's done that are wacky or weird or a little bit off, I find this to be potentially maybe the biggest what in the world out of all the things that I've read. This is 2 Samuel chapter 6, and it's verse 17. So they brought the ark of the Lord and set it in its place in the midst of the tabernacle that David had erected for it. Then David offered burnt offerings and peace offerings before the Lord. Now, quick backstory: if you go all the way back to 1 Samuel chapter, chapter 4, that um, Samuel was a little, a little child, a little boy at this point, and Eli, the priest, was the judge over Israel, and his sons were horrible, horrible sinners. They were actually forcing people to give them more of the offering than the priest deserved. They made men abhor the offering of the Lord. That was a very great sin before the Lord. And at the time, the Philistines were kicking the Israelites' butts, and so the Israelites were like, hey, let's take the Ark of the Covenant out to battle. This will be our lucky charm to win. And God was like, LOL, no. And the Israelites died. The not all of them, obviously, but the Israelites that went out to battle that day died. They were scattered. They were sent back to their tents in defeat. The two sons of um, Eli, Hophni and Phinehas, they died. And the Ark of the Covenant was taken. Now, the Ark of the Covenant could not stay in the land of the Gentiles. Read chapters 5 and 6, and you see that, uh, yeah, God didn't like uh, his Ark being in in the hands of Gentiles at that time. He <laughs> he was not okay with the Ark of the Covenant being outside of Israel, so he struck them with, uh, from what I can tell, based on the Hebrew, uh, either tumors or hemorrhoids, or a combination of the two. And the Ark of the Covenant was eventually returned to Israel via a quite miraculous story. Read those chapters if you're interested in what exactly happened. I've told you guys time and again. Read 1 Samuel. It's a good book. And so in chapter 7, eventually the Ark of the Covenant comes back to, back to the land of Israel. I'll just go ahead and read um, 1 Samuel chapter 7, verse 1. Then the men of kirjath Jerim came and took the Ark of the Lord and brought it into the house of Abinadab on the hill and consecrated Eleazar his son to keep the Ark of the Lord. So it was that, so it was that the Ark remained in kirjath Jerim a long time. It was there 20 years, and all the house of Israel lamented before the Lord. And so finally, whereas Saul, even at any point during his reign, not at the beginning, not when he was anointed, not when he became king, not after a bunch of battles, and definitely not after he fell, he never returned the ark to the tabernacle. So David, and now that he's established, uh, he's established not only in Judah, he's established in Israel, and he also, in chapter 5, he got the city of David, or Zion, uh, if you want the word Zion, go to 2 Samuel chapter 5, verse 7. So Zion is the city of David. Zion is obviously a very popular name, um, both with the Jews and with the Christians of today. And David finally brings the Ark of the Covenant back into Israel, and there's a or not in back in Israel, but like into to a tabernacle. There's so many things in this chapter that I could cover, and I'm simply not going to cover them all because it's supposed to be a quick message, even though it's probably not quick at all. My last several messages have not been quick. And it says, going back to where I started, 2 Samuel chapter 6, verse 17. So they brought the ark of the Lord and set it in its place in the midst of the tabernacle that David had erected for it. What happened to the original tabernacle? Did David simply take all the cloths and all the linens and re-erect the tabernacle of the Lord? Did he make literally his own tabernacle? What in the world was going on here? David makes up his own tabernacle? If you read earlier in that chapter, apparently they did not bring the Ark of the Covenant into the city of David correctly because one of the sons of Abinadab reached out his hand to study the Ark of the Covenant. You don't touch the Ark of the Covenant, and he died. So apparently it's not like David had studied up and the people of Israel had studied up and they knew exactly how to handle the Ark of the Covenant, even though it's written clearly in the law of Moses how to handle it. They didn't do their research, and someone died because of that. And so then they bring the Ark of the Covenant not back to Shiloh, but they bring it into the city of David. And I, it was said that the tabernacle would be brought wherever the Lord determined. Maybe the Lord determined it to be 
the city of David and not Shiloh at that point. Maybe David used the old tabernacle cloths. Maybe after that person died, he reconstructed the tabernacle the way the law of Moses said it to be constructed. But it's just like he built his own tabernacle. He relocated the Ark of the Covenant to a city that was not the city where it originally was. What? So much what there? And I'm not sure what to think of it. Obviously, again, David uh, has done several things in his life that are debatable. And um, I'll actually link my 30-minute sermon to this particular one just because it's so what the heck. What is going on here? So, yeah, leave, leave, a, leave a, something in the comments. Let me know what you think. If, if you've read some verses that I haven't or you have an understanding that I don't, let me know. But just of all the things for David to do, bringing the Ark of the Covenant into his own tabernacle and into his own city. I know the man had a heart after God. Maybe he just wanted God close to him. Maybe that was the motivation. I don't know. It's just so what? <laughs> so again, this lots of thinking videos recently. That's a good thing. We all need to think. We need to expand. And we need to acknowledge that there are things that we simply don't understand and don't know. Not only in the Word of God, but in life and with other people in general. So thank you guys very much for watching this video. I love you. God bless.